Good morning. This is Frank Taylor with Nature in Your Backyard. And today I'm going to show you how to identify milkweed, how to find it, and explain a little bit about why it's so important to monarch butterflies. Monarch butterflies go through the most incredible journey in their life cycle. There's no insect in the world that travels like it does. It'll go from Canada and New England states all the way down through Virginia and the Carolinas, cross the country to Texas and migrate down to Mexico to spend the winter in a winter roost there. And then in the springtime, it'll turn around and come back. So this episode is about the only thing that monarch butterflies eat. They're completely tied to this. This is such an important plant. This would be a great plant for everyone to grow in their backyards and to nurture and to foster and have it there. So today's episode is finding milkweed, identifying milkweed, and understanding how it's so important. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's to make this invasive. It's exotic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's so this is going to be the first in a series all about monarch butterflies and how you can find them, raise them, and hopefully at the very end release monarchs with a tag on them that you got from monarchwatch.com. It's a great, great site that you have to see, and it'll be amazing for you to contribute to this study by actually rearing and tagging monarchs and releasing them in your area. So the next video is going to be on how to find monarch eggs. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to go down the road and take a look at some milkweed plants and one of their lookalikes, which is called dogmane. But you know me, first I got to talk about the scientific name of this plant. The scientific name of this plant is Asclepius syriaca. Asclepius syriaca. Where does that name come from? What can we learn from this name? Well, the first part of the name is named for the Greek god of medicine, Asclepius. So this plant has lots of medical uses in the past. It does contain a toxic chemical, it's toxic, uh, that's a cardiac glycoside that affects animals in a lot of different way. And the cardiac gly glycoside is there to inhibit grazing by herbivores. The second part of its name is Syriaca. And Carlos Linnaeus, who is known as the father of ta modern taxonomy, who invented this whole scientific naming system of genus and species, thought that this plant originally came from Syria. So he made the species name Syriaca and it's stuck with the plant. So let's go take a look and see some of this plant. And I'm gonna do it just by walking down the road next to my house. So walking down this country road, this is the perfect habitat for finding milkweed. Milkweed seems to love to grow on roadsides. Here are one, two, three milkweed plants. Well, how do I identify them? Well, the first thing on this particular one, it's kind of easy because it's got a flower. And look at the flower structure on these guys. It's a very, very unique, very complex flower structure. And you can see that there's five main sections or petals to each flower. And the discussion of the flowers itself is a discussion in itself. But what are the other features here? Well, you can see that it all comes from a single stem. And that is a very important feature as well. And you can see that it's a single stem plant. That helps us distinguish it from a plant called dogmane. Notice the orientation of the leaves, how they come out and sort of symmetrically in four corners. The other feature is to look at how the leaves are always opposite. So these are two are opposite each other. These two are opposite each other as well, but they're at 90 degree angles to each other. 
Let's take a leaf, pull this one off, and I'm going to take it home to feed it to some of the monarchs or half. You see, there's nothing very distinguishing about the, the shape of this leaf. It's very dark green on the top, and it's a lighter, almost soft, velvety green underneath. And if you run your fingers over it, it feels like velvet. And you can see that it has a very, very distinct midrib vein that goes up through the length of the leaf with side branches. And we'll turn it over and look at the top. And you can see that the top is flat, but you can still see that main vein and the side branches to that vein. Another distinguishing feature of the plant is that if you break it, wherever you break it, you'll see a milky white sap come out. Part of the reason why it gets its name milkweed. If you look at this plant where I pulled one of the leaves off, you can see that white sap bleeding out. So this white sap is toxic, and for some people with particularly sensitive skin, it can cause a bit of an irritation and a rash. Never, never, never touch your eyes after handling milkweed, because if you get that sap from your fingers in your eyes, it will be extremely, extremely irritating. And again, this plant has developed these toxins to be resistant to grazing by herbivores. However, a lot of insects will visit this plant. The flowers are particularly strongly scented, very, very nice smell. They attract so many different pollinators. In fact, there'd probably be some here, except it's early in the morning and it's cool and damp and the insects haven't gotten very active yet. So biologists estimate there, there's probably at least 250 different insects that go to milkweed for one reason or another, either to get nectar from the flowers or to find prey that are there on the flowers or to actually eat the plant. And several species have adapted or co-evolved with this plant to be able to tolerate the poisons that are in it and carry those same poisons into their bodies. For example, in addition to the monarch butterfly, which is black and orange, which is an aposematic coloration. See some of my other videos where I talk about aposematic coloration, like in newts, for example, the red F stage. So the monarch caterpillar, the egg, the pupa, the adult, all carry these toxins from the milkweed plants in their bodies. And so organisms learn, don't eat black and orange butterflies. They're toxic. You eat one of those, you're going to throw up, you're going to get sick, they taste bad. And other insects have adapted to do that too, including the milkweed beetle, the milkweed bug, which is different from a beetle, and the tussock moth caterpillar, and a species of orange-colored aphid. Some of these I'll be showing you as the, the video series progresses, as I go out to visit milkweed and find caterpillars and tussock moths and milkweed bugs, and I'll tell you to be telling you the story about each of those as well as along with the monarchs. So let's review how to identify a milkweed plant again. So, first thing you look at is, look for a tall plant, and it can be up to three, four, even five feet tall, and you can see how these milkweeds are standing up above the other weeds around it. Look for a single stem, like this one. Look for leaves that are arranged opposite on the stem. They're always opposite to each other. And if you look at it from the top, you'll see that their leaves are arranged at 90 degree angles. This time I can confirm it by seeing the flowers. Um, and I can also tear a leaf or break a leaf off and look and see if a milky white sap comes out. That's how to identify a milkweed plant. Let's go walk down the road and check out another stand that I know of. So I'm walking down the road and uh, right next to some of this milkweed is a look-alike plant. And so I'm able to show you this look-alike. All right, why does it look alike? Well, superficially, let me take one of the leaves from this plant and I'll put it side by side with the milkweed leaf. 
And you can see that, well, superficially, they do look the same, don't they? The midrib on the milkweed here is a little bit more distinct, but this one has it. And notice that when I tear this leaf, it has a milky white substance coming out of the leaves as well and dripping from the stem. So how do I tell them apart? Well, if you're lucky enough to see a flower, and this one is just starting to flower, the flowers don't look like that of a milkweed. And notice the other thing, it has a branching stem. Dogbane branches, see this dogbane right here? See the branching stem? And it's a tall plant and it sticks up above the weeds just like the milkweed. But milkweed is always a single stem. So there's a, how you identify milkweed in comparison to dogbane. They do. Walking down the road here, I got an opportunity to show you another milkweed plant and another distinguishing feature. And this makes it unmistakable. Check out those seed pods. They're funny looking. They're covered with little spines. So this is the seed pods of a milkweed plant. Single stem, opposite leaves, dark green on top, midrib underneath. I'm confident that after watching this video, you're gonna be able to find milkweed when you need to find one. So I'm here now in my favorite stand of milkweed. And you can see I'm six feet tall. This milkweed plant is almost five feet tall. And there's a big group here. Milkweed plants are perennials. That means they come up every year from their rootstock. And they spread not only by seeds, which are in those seed pods, up to 150 seeds in each pod and carried by a white fluff. These will also spread underground by rhizomes and they'll also spread by seed, so they can really form a really nice stand. This stand, unfortunately, is here at the side of the road between two driveways, and I know eventually it's gonna get mowed. And part of me wants to come down here and put a sign in the middle and says, milkweed, monarch habitat, uh, please do not mow till late fall, because it's such a, a really good stand. And it's here in my next episode, I'm gonna show you how to find monarch caterpillar eggs. So every plant I find, there's always so much to learn from it and teach from it. This is a plant that's been around for thousands of years and it had many uses over the time. One of the things it was used for medicine, and that's why it's named after the Greek god of medicine, because historically it had a lot of medicinal uses, both in Europe, in North America, and even the Native Americans, like the Cherokees, used milkweed in several concoctions. People ate milkweed, and he said, but, but it's toxic. Well, they learned that if you took tender milkweed plants and boiled them, you could boil the toxin out, and it would be very good to eat. Remember, so many of these things, I always talk about these plants, that a lot of us call weeds, that we find in our yards, have names and histories. And so many of the weeds that are in your backyard right now, if you don't use weed killers, were used and eaten. It was tough living without grocery stores and pharmacies. You had to take advantage of every single thing you could that was out in nature in order to survive, and you knew about them and learned about them. Another thing milkweed was used for was to create fiber for ropes and twine and even cloth. Milkweed plants have some very tough fibers in their stems. And the other day I tried to break one off. I didn't bring a pair of clippers or scissors with me. I couldn't break it. I wanted to bring it home to feed to my monarch caterpillars that I'm rearing at home right now. And I could not break it. And so those fibers, were taken, they would dry the plants and roll those stems in their hands like this and break out the fibers. And then they would t separate these fibers and twist them together to make a yarn or a cloth or a fabric with. Another crazy use of this plant was from the milkweed pods. A lot of people are aware of how you can break open the milkweed pod. Each seed in there has a white fluff on it and you can blow them and they're carried by the wind. Well, they used those in World War II, again, when resources were really tough to stuff life vests with. Isn't that incredible? So they had people out gathering 
milkweed pods from fields and separating the seeds from it and using it to stuff life vests for our soldiers in World War II. Isn't that incredible? So remember, my number one goal is always for you to go outside and see what you can find. Go out and see if you can find milkweed. You know how to identify it now. And remember that when you look at that milkweed, you might find all kinds of things. You might find the red milkweed beetle. You might find milkweed bugs on it. You might find tussock moss caterpillars on it. And hopefully you're gonna find monarch caterpillars or monarch eggs. Next episode, I'm gonna show you how to find the monarch eggs, so stay tuned. Good luck, go see if you can find some milkweed in between. Come back and I'll show you how to find monarch eggs on milkweed plants. Thanks for watching Nature in Your Backyard. And don't forget, if you like what I did, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss an episode and share it with people you think might like it. I wanna get more and more people caring about nature, curious about nature, engaged about nature. And in the long run, this is gonna help our planet.